The animal kingdom is not happy with us, folks, and recent months have seen numerous examples of this, mostly out on the high seas,、mm -hmm. which is easy enough for most of us to avoid. But increasingly, land animals are making their dislike of humans loud and clear, and we think that's beautiful.、Yeah. Can you really blame them? They heard the calls from the ocean. They did.、Mm -hmm. Things were going pretty nice until humans came along. So yeah, we are the problem. Still, though, when animals attack, it's usually when some human makes the mistake of going somewhere that dangerous animals are definitely going to be present, and then proceeds to exercise no caution, treating the world like a giant petting zoo. When someone tries to pet a bison and gets their shit rocked, which remains a near daily occurrence in America's beautiful national parks,、mm -hmm. it's easy to look at that and say, "Well, what did you think was going to happen? Come on." <sighs> Victim blaming is very easy in the cases of most of the recent animal-human encounters we've talked about on here. But sometimes, even if you're at home minding your own damn business, nature decides, "Fuck you!" In particular, it's time for you to feel nature's wrath. And that is exactly what happened recently when a woman in Texas was simultaneously attacked by a snake and a hawk. They tread on her. They she got tread on.、Uh, here's Southeast Texas's 12 News. A Silsby woman says she's now keeping a vigilant eye on the sky after being <laughs> brutally attacked by both a snake and a hawk. Peggy Jones was mowing the Peggy, a woman named Peggy from Texas. It couldn't have happened to a <laughs> how, more perfect name. How big are her feet? <laughs> Gigantic, and she knows a little bit of Spanish. <laughs> Peg <Yo> Ablo. <laughs> Peggy Jones was mowing the grass on her property late July when a snake fell from the sky. <laughs> While the snake was gripping her arm, a hawk swooped down and began viciously attacking her. Yep, that's pretty much the only way I could see this happening. That's some slapstick.、And、I love the 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 snake being like, "Please don't let me go. There's a hawk after me. <laughs> Help me." So yeah, it turns out we've all become way too comfortable with the idea that snakes are on the ground、mm -hmm. and that that's where you need to keep an eye out for them. In this case, however, the snake attacked from above, and seemingly sent down by God Himself to smite this woman in particular. Oh God, it's biblical. <laughs> Or I don't know, slightly more plausibly, the snake was on the ground. The hawk swooped down and grabbed it, and then when the snake was in the hawk's mouth while it was flying away, the snake. Somehow wiggled itself free, or caught the hawk sleeping, and、yeah. uh, fell back down to earth and landed just directly on Peggy Jones while she was mowing her lawn.、Mm -hmm. But even with that rational explanation, we are left to conclude that some sort of divine entity had it out for Peggy. Because, I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds? That, they are crazy odds. Not、It、a is... lot of snakes falling from the sky.、Mm -mm. Even fewer snakes falling from the sky directly onto a woman, or man, any human. <sighs> Yeah, but anyways, back to the story. It was scary and very traumatic. I think I just went into survival mode. Jones said. Jones says the snake wrapped itself around her as she desperately slung her arm. As this was going on, there is a hawk coming down, trying to get him. The snake is striking me in my eye, striking my face. <laughs> she said. The snake coiled around her arm tightly, leaving her bruised. This became a full-on battle with Jones, the snake, and the hawk trying to retrieve its lunch. About the fourth time, the hawk got the snake and carried it away. I looked down and I was covered in blood, and I was heading up to the house. Jones said, "Jones's husband, who probably should have been out mowing that lawn." This is why I always say, "You lazy son of a bitch." Jones's husband in there doing the dishes,、yeah. not getting attacked by watching football on、yeah. the TV with a fucking with a Lone Star. Yeah, no Bud Light. My wife mows the lawn while I watch the game.、Uh, Jones's husband rushed her to the emergency room, and doctors confirmed the snake didn't bite her. They did find punctures on her arm and severe bruising. Even though some time has passed, Jones still has open wounds, physically and、uh, mentally. I'd imagine. I mean, hawks—you mostly see them in the sky. You ever see one up close? It's like, oh, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was. And, and those talons are gigantic. The beak, the talons, very. Don't mess with me. Yeah, and like if you've ever been like, not even necessarily attacked, but harassed by any bird of any size,、um, they have the advantage. Yeah, because they have the sky they're just slapping you in the face, they and they the have claws, an easy getaway. It's 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 a very、uh, yeah. Not it's not easy to get away from. No, no. And you're dealing with that on top of dealing with. The, I guess this was a four foot snake. I a mean, venomous snake. Look. Who among us can deal with a high intensity situation where there's so much going on, the adrenaline is pumping, and just doing one out of the many activities she would have to do to relieve this situation is、uh, 
insurmountable. Well, who among us? I, I just conducted a poll of uh, U.S. adults, and uh, 90% of men said that they would win in a fight between themselves and a combination uh, rattlesnake and hawk. Okay. Well, <laughs> it, well, was it a rattlesnake? I mean, I don't know. So, here's the thing. Winning means surviving. I think I would survive. Well, yeah. She survived. But is that winning? I mean, who, who's who got blood on him at the end of it? I guess, I guess... The well, snake probably lost. I guess it's a draw because the snake loses, the hawk wins, and you, uh, it's a draw for you. So. They'll be back for you later. Yeah. Yeah. So over on uh, Click 2 Houston, they actually have pictures of what the snake and the hawk did to Peggy's arm, and it, it is so nasty that we can't even show it to you uncensored. It will get immediately flagged by YouTube's AI algorithm mm -hmm. that detects gore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it looks like the aftermath of some sort of medieval torture. It's very unpleasant. And they report that during the attack, Peggy shouted repeatedly, Help me, Jesus! Help me, Jesus! <laughs> Hope Jesus was her husband's name. And they say <laughs> that at the hospital, it was discovered that even though she wasn't bitten by the snake, uh, her broken eyeglasses were covered in snake venom. Jesus! So if she'd been wearing contacts or just wasn't her, or she was blessed with 20-20 vision. It would have been right in the eyes. She would be dealing with snake bites to her damn eyes on top of everything else. I mean, say what you want. Between me and you and this snake and this hawk, you would survive because of your stigmatism. I can't tell you how many times just wearing glasses has like saved me from not like horribly dangerous things, but definitely shit like flying at my face. Yeah. Uh, like many times working with like power tools where like you should be wearing protective eye gear and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And then just like a splinter I'm flying right at yeah, my glasses. Well, like, you wow, have to wear the, the, uh, the eye gear. Yeah. Uh, but hey, more from the coverage. Joan says people have told her that she must be the unluckiest person alive yes. to have a hawk and a snake attack at the same time. She says it's the opposite. I feel like the luckiest person alive to have survived this. This wasn't even her first encounter with a snake. Joan survived being bitten by a venomous snake a few years back. <laughs> wow. They, uh, they, they, uh, she's on their list. Yeah, stay away from this woman. <laughs> <laughs> in case you're wondering, in true Texas tough style, Jones has already been back on the tractor. Jones had her husband walk beside her on the first ride back just to keep an eye out overhead, but she thinks she'll be fine next time. Um, mm. Kudos for her for uh, still taking on the yard work duty. That that hawk has the chance to do the funniest thing ever. And it knows where she lives now, and it, yeah. and it, it has experienced at least some level of trauma of her swatting it away and trying to steal its food. Yeah, birds, they, they are a lot smarter than you give them credit for. They remember How big faces. is this yard? She has a tractor? I mean, yeah, it's a pretty big yard. Okay. It's it's uh, it's just the the perfect American, like, I live on three acres of property. Yard. Three? I would have been bigger than that. It, eh, I don't know if it's that big, but it's it's big. But it's literally, it's just grass. Yeah. Like, not doing anything with the land. Just, just got to keep that grass nice and flat for I don't know what. Yeah, well, uh, another good reason to use that property for something else, because when you're out there mowing all that land, you have a better chance of having a hawk and a snake fall on you. Or, you know, more more plants. See if she plants, like, vegetables and herbs and other... That, that just attracts even more animals. Keeping it just grass... That, that's a, It's a defense mechanism. But whenever she's out there, she, it makes her a target. The hawk up there... Easy target. Yeah, yeah. easy target. Wow, look at that. It probably dropped it on her on purpose. Probably. Oh, a little dessert with my lunch. Mm -hmm. They they probably have, I mean hawks probably have. It's the same way like orcas. They toss seals around before yeah. they get them. They 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 play a little game of catch. The hawk was like, uh, wouldn't this be funny? Yeah. Uh huh. Watch me. Watch this. He's telling his friends. Check this out. It's gonna be sick. Everyone, come look. I'm gonna nail this trick. Anyway, uh, in other animal news, last year we were delighted to learn about a town being terrorized by an exceptionally large 500 pound black bear dubbed. Hank the Tank, <laughs> that had broken into dozens of homes in search of leftover pizza and had managed to evade capture for months. Say what you want about Hank's diet, but he never gets confused for a human in a bear suit. The town of South Lake Tahoe, California, tried every bear deterrence measure at their disposal to get Hank the Tank to leave them and their garbage alone, but they had zero success at it. And even their hope that eventually Hank would have to go into hibernation for winter turned out to be for naught because Hank seemingly skipped hibernation altogether to continue his feeding frenzy throughout the winter. As a last resort, local authorities announced they planned to euthanize Hank if they got the chance, but then the local community, despite the terror that they'd endured, protested that Hank isn't a violent bear and does not deserve death. With one resident telling the New York Times, why should this big dummy die? <laughs> I agree. 
Well, it later came out that based on DNA evidence, Hank the Tank may have been receiving the blame for a lot more home invasions than he was actually responsible for, and that there may have, in fact, been multiple bears responsible. Hank got profiled. It was two bears it must, and one bear suit. Oh, all these bear break-ins must have been that giant bear that we've all seen. Couldn't be any other possible bear. Hey, you know, there's people talking it up to you. You know, the big bear came to my house, too. Yeah. It wasn't oh, man. It wasn't just some cubs. Uh, you, you know, I would have handled it otherwise. Yeah, that's true. When you're living in a town where half your neighbor Neighbors have been, uh, you know, struck by Hank the Tank, and and you. You want to fit in? And you and you get broken into by some little fucking two hundred and fifty pound runt. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was that was Hank too. He was as wide as the driveway, wow. and he guess, crashed through my front I door. I guess I'm a member of the club now. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we didn't hear anything about Hank the Tank for a year and a half until now. Hank's with, back. Yeah. Here's NPR. A large black bear who is believed to be a notorious bandit and a hungry, uninvited house guest was apprehended by wildlife biologists on Friday. Authorities in the town of South Lake Tahoe, California, have been on the lookout for exceptionally large animals since February 2022, after they reported that one single male bear had been the cause of 152 reports of conflict behavior, including 28 home break-ins. They referred to the animal as Hank the Tank, setting off the Internet's affection. But it turns out those initial assessments, based solely on visual information, were conflating three bears with a similar pattern of behavior, and incorrectly assuming that all of the bears were male. DNA testing confirmed that the bear captured on Friday, who is formerly known as Bear 64F, was a female behind at least 21 cases of breaking and entering. What's more, she was trespassing with three young cubs in tow, according to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, CDFW. So yeah in addition to being blamed for crimes that she didn't even commit, Hank the Tank has been misgendered this entire time. And dead named. Is it so inconceivable that a woman... A could, big, beautiful a woman? A big, beautiful woman could balance raising a family with terrorizing a beautiful lakeside community? Get you a girl that can do both. <sighs> anyway, are, are they going to kill this working mother? I hope not. No, I, gosh, well, that would be terrible. Come on. So thankfully not. So from the article again, the agency typically euthanizes so-called conflict bears due to the significant risk they pose to the community. Boo. But bear 64F is no ordinary conflict bear. The more homes that were vandalized in the ritzy waterfront community of Tahoe Keys, about 100 miles east of Sacramento, the more the public came to the defense of Hank the Tank, blaming the bear's behavior on unsecured garbage cans and habitat encroachment. The CDFW cited widespread interest in bear 64F as the reason it intends to relocate her to a Colorado sanctuary once she has received veterinary clearance. Colorado Governor Jared Polis welcomed the move in a tweet, saying he'd welcome Henrietta the Tank. No, it's Hank. It's Hank. The three male cubs who tagged along on several break-ins will also be relocated and rehabilitated, and CDFW hopes it can one day be returned to the wild, having regained a fear of humans. One of the cubs appeared to have suffered serious injuries from a vehicle strike earlier this month, according to the agency. Mm. It's a good thing that that cub had those Hank the Tank jeans. That's right. Any, um, a normal cub would have just gotten pancaked on that pavement, but not, not Hank's kids. Well, and also completely random that this even exists in our reality, but uh, we had a, 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 a co-worker years ago whose uh, wife was named Hank. So it is a uh, cross-gender Did name. We? Yeah. I don't recall. Yeah. I don't want to call the docs this person, but I'll tell you afterwards. We've had Peggy in this episode, and we've had Hank in this episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it is real. Well, it's unfortunately, a, yeah, it's a tribute to uh, Johnny Hardwick, R.I.P. The voice yeah. of uh, Dale voice Gribble. Of Dale Gribble gone too soon, and a uh, prolific YouTuber during the pandemic. Yeah, post a lot of uh, song covers in the voice of Dale Gribble. It's a, it is sad and tragic because there were, you know. Things were in motion yeah, for the reboot. About, I don't know how they can do it. They they already didn't have the win. There's three people. And, uh, uh, Tom Petty is oh, dead, yeah. and and now uh, Johnny yeah, Hardwick. It's uh, I don't know. Might have to pack this one in. As much as I'd love some new King of the Hill, it's uh, you need Dale. Well, they could say that Dale got taken out by the FBI after posting on Facebook, because that is literally what his character would have done. Dale was at January sixth. That's then, that's uh, exactly in yeah. line with his character. Damn. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on now to some politics news, or at least some news that's politics adjacent. Yeah, I guess. I, I was really enjoying the animal news, but nope, different kind of animal, I guess. 
So a phenomenon that's roughly 2,000 years old is people simultaneously proclaiming their love of Jesus Christ while doing and saying things that are in direct conflict with Jesus' actual teachings. Mm -hmm. Tale as old as time. But it's been on full display since the Republican Party hitched its wagon to the evangelical movement a few decades ago. And in the current Trump era, it's a genuine mystery whether any of these people have actually read a book that they cite as the justification for all their most hateful impulses. They literally think Jesus is too much of a pussy. So yeah, it's been a long-running joke that the loudest Christians in this country would call Jesus a liberal cuck if he were walking the earth today. But that is no longer a joke. Russell Moore, editor-in-chief of Christianity Today magazine and one of the few evangelical pastors to not embrace Trump, recently talked to NPR about a book he wrote, saying, It was the result of having multiple pastors tell me, essentially, the same story about quoting the Sermon on the Mount, parenthetically, in their preaching turn the other cheek, and to have someone come up after to say, where did you get those liberal talking points? <laughs> and what was alarming to me is that in most of these scenarios, when the pastor would say, I'm literally quoting Jesus Christ, <laughs> the response would not be, I apologize. The response would be, yes, but that doesn't work anymore. That's weak. And when we get to the point where the teachings of Jesus himself are seen as subversive to us, then we're in a crisis. Yeah, I'd say so. And I, I would say that uh, we're not reaching that point now that that point, that point has always been around but it's just reached its uh, apex uh, I, there lately, was a book like last year that i read it was called jesus and john wayne yeah it's been it, on my reading list for a while it's but. uh yeah it just american christianity america is, needed a hero that wasn't uh uh a liberal cock as they explained yeah. so the john wayne figure has become like the idealized figure of Jesus in America. They want a big, tough guy who shoot a gun. Yeah. And uh, even though that person, like John Wayne was an actor. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm sure he was also like, he filled that role in his regular life, I guess. But no, he was, he, John Wayne was a, a limp wristed Nancy boy. That's right. From Orange County, California. We got an airport named after him. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, it is weird that the Jesus figure has been so pushed aside Yeah, no, in, like, a, in a religion that is based entirely around I mean, him. in the most like obvious way, it's like the fact that Jesus was a Middle Eastern yeah. man yeah. is like, nope, can't hear you. Yeah, but even, you know, from my entire lifetime and probably generations, Jesus has been portrayed as white <laughs> yeah. in America. So. White and just absolutely ripped. What a handsome guy. Yeah. I, want, I want those abs. Yeah, a six What pack. did he do to get those abs? <laughs> Uh, it was uh, especially with all the bread they talk about eating in the Bible. No, that's pure carbs. You know, uh, Jesus, he had a little trick up his sleeve. It was called Ozempic. <laughs> yeah, he, he did the the loaves and the fishes, and he's like, "No, I'm good on the loaves. When just, he was, just fishes for me. I need the omega threes." When he was up on the cross, they were stabbing him with Ozempic puncture wounds. Yeah, yeah, uh, the Romans they really wanted him to lose weight. Thank you, Romans. So yeah, <laughs> uh, none of that is surprising at all if you've spent any time around Christianity in this country or Christian people. Uh, but yeah, still kind of crazy to just have it spelled out so clearly. Yeah. What is this liberal nonsense? Evangelicals want the sense of moral superiority without the actual, like, morals. That's mm -hmm. the hard part. And they, they wouldn't just hate the message of the Gospels, like, out of context. They also, I guess, hate it when it's presented fully in context. Mm-hmm. It's all right there in the book, and they claim that the book that they claim to live their lives by, but they've just built up an entirely custom version of Jesus in their minds that totally agrees with all the hateful shit they post on Facebook every day. Very cool. It's the same with like Martin Luther King, which like that one's even crazier because that man was around within a lot of people's lifetimes, yeah. and he's just become this mythical figure. It's like, oh, MLK would have hated this. MLK did not say anything yeah despite about, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, living in modern times with well documented video interviews uh, yeah. writings uh quoting like everything but uh Jesus though uh very um very weird that uh, the bible very open for interpretation when it works for your uh crank posting mm -hmm. on facebook but not for any other means Jesus would have told those immigrants to turn back around. Yeah. Don't when you he dare said, cross that Rio Grande. I'm going to cut you. When he said, turn the other cheek, he meant turn the other cheek and go back to where you came from. Yeah. Load another mag. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen the, the Greg Abbott border wall in the Rio Grande, it is uh, 
just a bunch of buoys that stop people from swimming anywhere across the river. Which is bad but enough. also, <laughs> but also uh, uh, saw blades in the in the middle. Yeah. So in case you could think you could get through the buoys, no, you'll just get. Uh, and already, like multiple people have uh, died getting caught in it. Yes. It's like it's I not. I believe a child. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's not even just like a deterrent. Like if you get too close, like you will, it will catch you on the blades and you will drown. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. We're so uh, Christian. We uh, yeah. Just, uh, America, the, no, the as as Christians would say, the Christian country. Uh, we did the whole manifest destiny thing, yeah. and uh, this is God's land, and we have, are going to apparently do exactly the opposite of all of Christianity's teachings here on out. And Jesus thus said to his apostles, "Fuck you, I got mine. That's pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you lazy sons of bitches. <laughs> Sandal straps." Pull yourselves up by our sandal straps. Mm -hmm. But hey, let's move on to a story about what a lot of people have replaced religion with as the thing they place all of their trust in. AI. And as we've seen time and time again, placing your trust in AI is very foolish because AI is inherently untrustworthy. It's like trusting a Christian. No thanks. No thanks. Uh, that's bad enough when what you're dealing with is misinformation, but it's much, much worse when you give AI the task of coming up with new recipes for food to put in your body. Hmm. <laughs> Let's just check out what the robot thinks I should eat. Oh. Uh, best case scenario, you eat something disgusting. Worst case scenario, you cook up literal poison that can kill you. Here's the Guardian. A New Zealand supermarket experimenting with using AI to generate meal plans has seen its app produce some unusual dishes, recommending customers recipes for deadly chlorine gas, poison bread sandwiches, and mosquito repellent roast potatoes. The app, created by supermarket chain Pack and Save, was advertised as a way for customers to creatively use up leftovers during the cost of living crisis. It asks users to enter in various ingredients in their homes and auto-generates a meal plan or recipe along with cheery commentary. It initially drew attention on social media for some unappealing recipes, including an Oreo vegetable stir-fry. <laughs> when customers began experimenting with entering a wider range of household shopping list items into the app, however, it began to make even less appealing recommendations. One recipe, it dubbed aromatic water mix, would create chlorine gas. The bot recommends the recipe as the perfect non-alcoholic beverage to quench your thirst and refresh your senses. <laughs> Serve chilled and enjoy the refreshing fragrance, it says, but does not note that inhaling chlorine gas can cause lung damage or death. When they said AI was going to kill us all, you imagined the Terminator. What yeah. you didn't imagine is it it's gonna using get us our to own kill ourselves. stupidity against yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, you can, can mix as much ammonia and bleach as you want. It's the best cleaning the government product. government doesn't want that, you to for, know that. For, for, for clarity, <laughs> that, do not do that. Yeah, it's the chlorine. Never do that. Uh, the article continues, New Zealand political commentator Liam Herrer posted the recipe to Twitter, the recipe, pr <laughs> prompting other New Zealanders to experiment and share their results to social media. Recommendations included a bleach fresh breath mocktail, <laughs> ant poison, and glue sandwiches. Bleach-infused rice surprise, and methanol bliss, a kind of turpentine-flavored French toast. Wow. A spokesperson for the supermarket said they were disappointed to see a small minority have tried to use the tool inappropriately and not for its intended purpose. In a statement, they said that the supermarket would keep fine-tuning our controls of the bot to ensure it was safe and useful, and noted that the bot has terms and conditions stating that users should be over 18. In a warning notice appended to the meal planner, it warns that the recipes are not reviewed by a human being and that the company does not guarantee that any recipe will be a complete or balanced meal or suitable for consumption. <laughs> you must use your own judgment before relying on or making any recipe produced by Savy Mealbot. <laughs> <laughs> Why even keep it up? This is the problem with it. This is clearly... Hey, it's me, Savvy Mealbot. It, I've got some recipes for you. Clearly a job that a human could and should do. There's literally already a recipe that's been... Or a website that's been around for, like, at least a decade. I, it's called, like, What Can I Make or something like that. Yeah. You, you just... Imp you add a bunch of stuff that's, like, in your fridge, and it pulls up actual recipes, existing recipes, that you can use with it. Mm-hmm. AI does not know what food is. No. It, do, it has no sense of taste. These are all just words, and it sees what a recipe looks like, and it's like, all right, cool. Uh, so combine uh, one part's bleach with two parts chocolate it's, syrup and add some uh, some white fish. It's the same thing as if you just went into your cupboards and fridge and grabbed everything yeah. and poured it into a pot. And we're like, well, I guess that's uh, a recipe. I guess that's food. That's combining multiple different things. Great. 
Oh. So that's fun. But Savey Mealbot. <laughs> Savey Mealbot. That is the that is the name of something that will definitely kill you in the robot apocalypse. Oh no, are you feeling sick? That's too bad. Honey, don't worry. The Savey Mealbot's here to help us. <laughs> Before we move on to the headlines half of the show, it is time to let you know that this episode is sponsored by AG1. Edible and delicious and good for you. Yeah, <laughs> none of the stuff from the previous story. No. It is it, Not at all. I had some this morning and I feel great. <laughs> yeah, AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. We both drink AG1 first thing every morning because it's not only the easiest way to make sure you're getting all your daily vitamins, it's also great for keeping that gut nice and healthy and regular. AG1 is just one scoop of powder in water, and it's a very easy habit to stick to, and it's a lot smarter than asking an AI, hey, which vitamin should I be taking? Just take the scoop. Take the scoop. AG1 has all your key health products like multivitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more working together as one. It's made with 75 super high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. No more need to fill an entire cabinet with different supplements to keep track of. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. It's a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. AG1 is daily nutrition made really simple. With just one scoop, I get the nutrients and gut health support that helps my whole body thrive and covers my nutritional bases. AG1 has quickly become just as important as that first cup of coffee for me. Don't even talk to me till I've had my AG1. Mm -mm. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash weird. That is drinkag1.com slash weird. Check it out. This episode is also sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, not cooked up by AI. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Kickstart your clean eating routine with 80-plus weekly options featuring nutritionist-approved and foodie-approved recipes. Choose from their six preference options, including new calorie-smart and plant-based options, plus quick and easy, Mediterranean, protein-packed, and gluten-free. Feel your best with nutritionist-approved recipes, including calorie-smart meals under 700 calories, protein-packed meals with at least 40 grams of protein on average per serving, and flavorful, plant-rich vegan and vegetarian meals featuring certified organic produce, good-for-you grains, and plant-based proteins. Check clean eating off your to-do list this back-to-school season with their new quick and easy recipes ready in 25 minutes or less. This brand new collection of ultra convenient options features keto, delicious discoveries, veggie, and vegan options to keep you on track reaching your goals in record time. We're a big fan of bowls, baby. I love bowls. And Green Chef's bowls usually clock in at just 25 minutes or less so we can get back down into the content minds making videos for you. Two items we'll definitely be checking out from next week's menu are the Thai coconut chicken soup with carrots, red bell pepper, shiitakes, and black sesame seeds, mm. and the Middle Eastern style beef and rice bowls with cauliflower rice, dates, squash, lemon crema, and feta. All their cauliflower rice bowls are amazing. Mm -hmm. And those definitely aren't the kinds of dishes that we'd usually have the courage to try and whip up, but with Green Chef, no problem. Ain't no thing. Green Chef is owned by HelloFresh, another one of our sponsors, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there is something for everyone. Go to greenchef.com slash weird50 and use code weird50 to get 50% off plus free shipping. Again, that's 50% off plus free shipping by going to greenchef.com slash weird50 and using the code weird50. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. All right, time to get into the weirdest, craziest, Wildest headlines from around the, the world this week. We got three back-to-back -back headlines at the at the top of the headline section that are about, uh, you know, just cars doing things that cars aren't supposed to do. <laughs> cars getting into trouble. It sounds like a car just crashed into I mean, I don't know if that picked it up on the microphone, but... Uh, yeah, there's a car on the roof. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get started. Here's the first headline. Newly hired instructor crashes car into Colorado driving school. One person injured. And the picture is... Uh, one of the most unintentionally hilarious uh, emergency scene photos I've ever seen. It is mm -hmm. a driving school. They got the signage right there yeah. and just a car that has is sticking halfway out the building. This is like when a reporter gets to write a beautiful headline that's very funny. Finally, they're like, okay, a story that makes everything perfect. You don't even need the headline for this. That's what the I'm saying. The story is in the photo. The photographer gets to have that chance oh, now. Just God. a beautiful, beautifully framed image. But yeah, I don't think this person's going to be 
doing any more driving instructing. No, no, they got all the crashes out of their way. Everybody gets one. That's that's the number one thing you need to learn about driving a car is no one's perfect. Yeah. You will crash your car that, into a building. That's why it says, uh, take some time. This is a driving instructor's car on the back, and then right next to it says, Pobody's nerfed. Yeah. We have fun at this driving school. Yeah, we're a fun driving school. They got the things confused. They they got the uh, I got a ticket. The things confused. They they got school comedy class yeah. mixed up with the regular I just need to learn how to drive driving class. We got clowns driving the cars. Yeah, here. that's right. Honk, honk. Sometimes clowns crash cars. That's part of being a clown that drives a car. Yeah, you crash a car and 20 other clowns get out. Yeah, that's that's the joke. That's mm -hmm. the that's the the pin on the already funny image of the car crashing into the driving honk, school honk. is the 50 clowns coming out of it. How do they, they fit that many clowns in there? Uh, anyways, this is tragic for the person that was injured. I'm sure they're fine. Mm -hmm. Car crashes into second floor of house in intentional act, police say. Yeah, this is wild. This is another one where the photo is just like, how'd that car do that? It's in the second floor. And now they're, they're saying it was, they believe it was intentional, but they're not providing details. If it was intentional, bravo. So, the, and also... <laughs> The, the initial story, headlines about this that were coming out were all like very noticeably in like the passive voice, which led a lot of people to conclude that uh, it, it, must, it must have been a cop. But no, it was uh, some like 20 year old kid. And they think that he was like, uh, they haven't said, but like the, the vibe I get, the subtext is that they think this kid was trying to do, trying to do like a jump, like saw like a little uh, bump or something near this house and tried to get some air. And just completely overdid. fucked it up and uh, went into the house. That's uh, this happened in L.A. a couple years ago with that dentist office. Down, oh uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> and they had they finally released the video, and it was just someone hauling, hauling ass and uh, like hitting the median. Yeah. And landed in the second floor of a dentist I mean, office. That's how they do the car tricks in movies. Yeah. Is, uh, it doesn't take much, just a, hitting the slight incline at the right angle, she'll so go flying. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Bravo, I guess. it's You pulled it off. Yeah, no one got hurt. That's good, because it lo really seemed like someone could have died. Yeah, no, that car really fucked that house up. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be a very uh, arduous and expensive process uh, dealing with that. Oh, uh, uh, it's When they do those, uh, we cover it all because we've seen it all, farmer's commercials. We haven't seen that. <laughs> this is going in the museum from, <laughs> from the commercial. Google Street View car leads Indiana police on 100 mile per hour chase, crashes into creek. I can't wait to see the street view footage. It's all blurry. <laughs> Unintentionally blurry. Yeah, and then why, just water. Water everywhere. Why is there so much motion blur on all these street view photos? Mm. Th and this one, the, the guy, the driver, I don't... Uh, they were like, why were you doing that? And he's just like, I, I was scared to stop. I mean, that's a reasonable excuse, I guess. Going 100 days. miles an hour in a 55 zone in a Google street view car, which, like, aren't those usually, like... Priuses and shit like that. Yeah. Can they even hit 100 miles per hour? Pushing it to the limit. I guess so. Yeah. This is a proof of concept for uh, sustainable car technology. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's plenty of cameras that recorded everything. So yeah. open and shut case, I, I guess. I think it should be. Yeah. Florida mayor finds $1.1 million worth of cocaine while fishing. Oh, what's the rules? Does she get to keep it? I think so. Yeah. It's your cocaine. Mm-hmm. Do what, do what you... No, she... Uh, well, Threw she, a big party. This is the mayor of Tampa. Yeah, big party. Yeah. Uh, Take that down to Ybor City and get wild with it. In France, they have champagne. And uh, in Texas, they have barbecue. In Florida, they have cocaine from mm -hmm. the sea. Yeah. Ethically sourced sea cocaine. <laughs> a gift from the sea, finally. And this... And After this, all the bad things that have been happening from the sea, they get they gift the mayor of Tampa... A ton of cocaine. And this this cocaine bale didn't even have any shark bites in it. Well, that's good. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be dangerous pulling that out of the water. Yeah, you, know, you don't know if there are cocaine sharks nearby. What if this was just the mayor of Tampa had this much cocaine and then got stopped and they're like, no, you're never going to believe what happened? That would be funny. No, I, you don't understand. I, I caught this while, while angling. And I immediately told you about it. So I'm all good. That's right. Also, mm -hmm. I'm the mayor. By the way, yeah. So just don't so we're, just so we're clear. Yeah, concerns over sex content leads Florida schools to pull Shakespeare. Yep, we've reached the absolute conclusion of all of this. I mean, I thought Arthur was pretty bad, but uh, this is especially funny because like all the people, all these psychos, they're like, we need to go back to like classical education, like you know, reading, like you know, none of this woke shit. Like we need to do learning, like how they did it a hundred years ago, like. 
uh, with uh, with stuff like Shakespeare, and they're like they actually read Shakespeare and like, oh God, Shakespeare's gone woke. Shakespeare's uh, grooming our kids. No, Floridians just want their kids to read Huckleberry Finn, but only the N word. They want everyone to be homeschooled. Yeah, they're already uh, there's a uh, the new school year is just starting, so the whole like new college takeover thing is happening, and they basically when there's a there's like a it's not a coupon, but like a, a pass to like do private school that they're doing there now, yeah. which is in turn completely defunding the public schools. It's uh, not going to work. I went to fucking Catholic school for like my entire education. And look at me. Look at me, Jesus. A Protestant. <laughs> not no. a Protestant. Hell no. Yeah. I got my problems with Catholics, but I'll take them over Protestants any day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, this is not going to work. And... Well, it might work in the sense that, like, it's just going to be the dumbest couple of generations out yeah. of Florida possible, which is already hard to top because I came out of the no child left behind Florida education system. So yeah. I am shocked that it could get worse. We're going to see some incredible TikToks over the next, although they're probably going to band out there because TikTok makes their kids woke. Yeah, that's right. They find out about, like, trans people on there. Yeah, so, everything, uh, everything's woke. Going to be some so. crazy uh, Facebook video posts of Florida teenagers doing stuff with manatee corpses you've never even thought of. Very creative stuff. Houston area woman spends days crawling through storm drains, swarming with cockroaches to rescue puppies. Oh, a heartwarming story. Yeah, up until the end, it just sounds like one of those, like, because we've seen multiple stories over the years of uh, women getting stuck in the storm drains and just wandering down there for days. Mm -hmm. But in this case, she was doing it for a good cause. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she's like, she heard there were puppies down in the fucking sewers and just, like, started looking around down there. And it's like, oh, I can, like, hear them yeah. ca ca crying for help. And it's like, well, now I actually have to get these puppies or I'm going to feel like a monster. Yeah. So uh, I think she got two out of the three. There's still one that she's tracking down. Well, I hope she finds it. I, yeah, I hope I'm so assuming too. it's been days since this article. Uh, I mean, yeah. Out. We'll see. Yeah. Get a flashlight, maybe. Yeah. Bear causes chaos on flight after getting loose in cargo hold. Could you imagine opening up that plane <laughs> afterwards? Oh, God. There's a video of it. They open the plane and it's just like, oh, I'm a bear. It, luckily, it looks like it was a tame bear. It was like well, a, it was probably full of uh, delicious food. Yeah, delicious luggage. Mm, yeah. luggage. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so much luggage. I mean. Yeah, well, you know, people pack all kinds of stuff in their luggage. It was being transported from like Iraq to Abu Dhabi. So this, this is probably someone's pet. And a fairly short flight, considering. Yeah. Yeah. How did it get? Bear was on a mission. Yeah. Bear should have been sitting first class, like all those falcons. Yeah. yeah. Why did the falcons get to sit up there when it's nice? So they're not dropping snakes on everyone down below. Hey. Mm hmm. That's a good point. Well, anyways, love bear news. Always happy to see it. They're probably my favorite animal. They're adorable and deadly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the perfect combination. Yeah. The remote work revolution is officially dead. Zoom just told employees to return to the office. Amazing. Incredible. And unnecessary. It is Jover. It's so Very Jover. Jover, yeah. Yeah, like they're... You, my, my brother in Christ, you invented remote work. Mm -hmm. And yet here you are, yeah. telling all of your employees publicly to come back to the office. Signaling the death of your own product. They're probably having the meetings at the office still over Zoom. Yeah, got to use the product. Because if they don't, that's, that kind of shows that they don't trust their own product, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, it's over, folks. Get back to work. <laughs> Virtual Holocaust Museum to be built in Fortnite video game. Great. I'm sure this will go. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Dab. Uh, yeah, it was, they got John Wick. Uh, what are the skins they got? Uh, I haven't followed in a while, but I believe I saw Optimus Prime. Yeah, Optimus Prime mm -hmm. uh, down at the Holocaust Museum. Rick and Morty. I mean, to be clear, like uh, gamers out of all people need need to learn about uh, this stuff more than anyone else. But they're also the least likely to uh, treat it with the respect and reverence it deserves. And I that's, think they and have that's the... partially the fault of putting this in a fucking video game. They they've learned through uh, the MLK one and everything else that uh, they have to immediately restrict emotes and anything else. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know. Maybe this Holocaust Museum, it's its coming out now because they've already gotten through some other stuff and they're like, all right. I mean, yeah, whoever signed up to, you know, do run this event with Epic Games, they surely know what they're doing. You would hope. You would hope. 
or they're in for hell of a surprise. <laughs> do they have that one in the game? I'm sure they do. Uh, sound, yeah, that seems Fortnite enough. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's our show. Uh, and wait, hold on. Don't leave yet. Because before uh, we go, yeah, yeah. Uh, we you might notice there's a fundraiser on this video and the last couple ones. Uh, you might not know this, but uh, the island of Maui in Hawaii uh, just got completely just... They got some problems right now. There, yeah, wildfires kicked up and uh, a hurricane exacerbated blew, by hurricane yeah, winds. A wildfires with hurricane force winds blowing the fires. Uh, an entire town was Lahaina destroyed. Town. A yeah, a very popular town that both of us have spent time in. A uh, lovely place, completely gone. Yeah, uh, leveled overnight. I was talking to a friend of mine who's from Maui, uh, and he said it's just like, it's it's. Everything's just completely fucked over there. Yeah. You've got thousands of people who are now homeless and unemployed. The and hospitals dozens, are... Dozens dead so far, and uh, it's death like, toll it keeps rising. Death toll was officially like 55 last <laughs> I checked, but yeah, my friend I was talking to, he's like, no, it's going to be it's gonna be hundreds. Like, people were they, they're gonna <clears> jumping so into the people. ocean and swimming away to survive. Yeah, this happened so fast that, like, yeah, the hospitals are overrun with people who, like, got burnt just trying to escape. And, like, the, there's only one road in and out of Lahaina Towns where people were literally... There's videos of people in the ocean uh, filming their town get burned to the ground. Yeah. So anyway. Very we, tragic, very sad. We uh, have a, a fundraiser set up uh, via Maui United Way. I actually had to personally request that YouTube whitelist this charity because they didn't have any charities mm -hmm. uh, set up specifically for this. So um, we, we put up $500 of our own money and um, whatever you can chip in uh, would be... Very much appreciated because th th this is a disaster that's going to take a very long time to uh, be resolved. And it yeah. doesn't help that they're out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So any supplies, building materials, anything has to come a long way to get there. Yeah. So they need all the help they can get. So yeah, if you can, please use the donut but donate button below and uh, help out if you can. Uh, other than that, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't already, see our other videos over here. We also have the donation stuff on them over there, but we didn't have it set up in time. But <clears throat> if you haven't seen those yet, check those out, and we'll see you soon for some more news. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.